Hi, welcome to lecture 12. We're going to spend two days, two class days, talking about the derivatives of trig functions. This particular lecture is just going to be about the, well, the stuff that you probably need to know the most, which is how do you actually take the derivatives of the, the six basic trig functions. And then uh, the second lecture is going to be more of why the derivatives are the way they are and also some important limits that you have to know about. So basically it's that one section in the book that has to do with um, taking derivatives of trig functions. It's going to be split over a couple of days. So anyway, this is lecture 12 and the perhaps the most important thing is to get into your heads the derivatives of those six functions. The six functions are the sine of x and I'm gonna well I'm gonna write them all out but I'm gonna write them in a, in a strange possibly a strange way not exactly the same way that the book does it but there's the sine the cosine <coughs> the tangent the cotangent and the secant and the cosecant. The cosecant is abbreviated in a couple of different ways. <clears throat> I'll probably use this one more than anything, CSC of X, or you can also spell it out more, S-O-C-O-S-E-C, -C, cosec of X. We'll talk more about what these are, uh, what the definitions of these are in terms of basic triangle trigonometry a little bit later, but for now, these are the basic six trig functions. And the question is, what are their derivatives? So what is the derivative of the sine of x? And the answer is, believe it or not, the cosine of x. And let's just move down. What's the derivative of the tangent of x? The derivative of the tangent of x turns out to be the secant of x squared. So we write that as secant squared. What that means, in case you've forgotten when you talk about trig functions, when you write secant squared of x, that really means secant of x multiplied by itself. Okay, so we write secant squared. Don't confuse that with secant of x squared. All right, those are totally different things. <clears throat> okay, so the, the derivative of tangent is secant squared. The derivative of secant is the secant of x times the tangent of x. Now moving to the other side, the derivative of cosine, whoops, the derivative, I'm going to draw a line down the middle here so that I don't get things too confused. The derivative of cosine is minus the sine. The derivative of cotangent is minus cosecant squared of x. And the derivative of cosecant is minus cosecant of x cotangent of x. Now this is the table that you need to memorize. There's no way around this. You're going to have to memorize this table and keep it in your head for the rest of your life. The derivatives of the trig functions come up a lot and you need to know them. I mean, it's not too hard to remember the derivative of sine is cosine. <clears throat> we'll be looking at what that means in the next day or two. And maybe the derivative of cosine equals minus the sine, you might be able to remember that, but how are you going to remember the derivative of tangent, the derivative of cotangent, or is it cosecant? Well, I would suggest remembering this table the way I've laid it out, rather than the way the book lays theirs out. They've got the same table, but they they switch a couple of them. I think they put sine, cosine, and tangent in the first column like this. But I like it this way, because if you look across, let me put some more ro rows in the table so that it looks like a real table. If you look across here, it tells you uh, in an easy way to remember what's going on. On the left, you have what I call the basic functions, sine, tangent, and secant. On the right, you have all the basic 
co-functions, the co-functions rather than the basic ones. Basic ones don't have any co's in them, you see? Sine, tangent, secant. And on the right, these are all the co-functions. Co-sine, co-tangent, co-secant. All right, so basically you have to remember the derivatives on the left here. Derivative of sine and cosine. Derivative of tangent is secant squared. Derivative of secant is secant tangent. Notice there's no cos over here except for the cosine, and that's easy to remember. Derivative of tangent is secant squared, so pound that into your head. You can tattoo it to your arm if you want. Derivative of secant is secant tangent. As you move across here, you'll notice that all the derivatives of the cofunctions have a minus in them. And if you remember the derivatives over here, you can take the co of all these functions. Let's start from the bottom. The co of secant would be cosecant. The co of tangent would be cotangent. And there's your minus. So the derivative of cosecant is just like the derivative of secant, except it's going to have a minus and it has going to have cos in front of all of the basic functions here. So if you've already learned the derivative of secant, then you, for the derivative of cosecant, you go minus co of this, co of that. So minus cosecant cotangent is the derivative of cosecant. Similarly, for the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So the derivative of cotangent will be minus the co of this, minus cosecant squared. And the derivative of cosine is minus the co of this. And you just have to think co of cosine is back to sine again. That may or may not help you. But however you want to do it, you've got six functions here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you've got to know the derivatives of those without thinking about them. So if I say, what's the derivative of cotangent? You've got to be able to split that back minus cosecant squared instantly without looking, without having to think. This is just something that's got to be memorized. So I would suggest taking some time to go through these, try to remember them, then quiz yourself on them. Write down the six functions and see if you can write down the derivatives. Um, try one over and over again. Repetition is the best way to memorize things. Then try to do it with a blank screen in front of you, black, a blank piece of paper. Just pick one at random and write the, down the derivative of whichever one you think of at random. So if you happen to think of tangent, you write derivative of tangent. And what is that? Secant squared. So remember it, say it to yourself a dozen times, and uh, eventually these will be learned. And you've got to keep reviewing them from time to time. Look back over this. Well, part of this will be very, very easy because you'll be taking derivatives of trig functions all the way through calculus from now on. So it shouldn't be too difficult for you to get practice with them. But you may want to look back and review this from time to time just to keep it fresh at least for a, a month or so. And after that, it seems like it does sink in and people seem to remember it forever if they keep using it, or at least if they use it a lot at the beginning. All right, I'm going to do some examples. What's the derivative of the sine of x times the cosine of x? Well, the first thing you've got to do is ask yourself, what are you dealing with here? What kind of thing is this? And the answer to that is, well, it's not just trigonometric. It's a product of two things. So what do you got to do? Well, there's no question about the fact that you're going to have to use the product rule. Now, write the product rule out long so that you can see it. But um, mostly, I would skip this step. Usually, I would skip this step. It's the first sine of x times the derivative with respect to x of the second, second being cosine of x plus the second cosine of x times the derivative of the first. So that's what the product rule tells me. Now I go ahead and take the derivatives as needed. The derivative of cosine of x, you have to remember, is equal to minus the sine of x. And in the second part, the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. So this could be simplified as minus sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x. Now one of the good things and also bad things for you about trig 
is that there are infinitely many ways to rewrite any trigonometric expression. That's actually a very, very good thing because it gives you lots of room to fiddle. It really gives you lots of room to manipulate, lots of things that you can do. You're not stuck with it as you are with other types of algebraic expressions. So <clears throat> when you have something in a trigonometric form, you might be able to find some other things to do. For example, here, it's pretty obvious that cosine, this is cosine squared minus sine squared, and you could write it as the difference of two squares, and then factor it if you felt like it, cosine x minus sine x times cosine of x plus sine x. That's just one of the ways it could be rewritten. Some of you might remember that there's an identity for cosine squared x minus sine squared x, but we're not going to look at that today. Any correct formulation of the answer is good enough. All right, let's do another example. Let's try the derivative of, oops, sorry, I was writing dx dx. I want the derivative with respect to x of this expression, 1 minus secant of x, 1 minus the secant of x divided by the tangent of x. So, what is the derivative of this thing? And the answer is, I've got to use the quotient rule. I have no choice here. Well, I do have choices, but um, I would have to rewrite this expression to see it differently. I'm going to use the quotient rule, though. So, so rather than writing it all out longhand like this, we'll take the derivative as we go along. So, the quotient rule says you start with the denominator. So, that's tangent of x times the derivative of the numerator. How do I take the derivative of 1 minus secant x? Well, I take the derivative of 1, which is 0, and then take the derivative of minus secant of x. This is getting complicated. The 1 isn't a problem, but the derivative of minus anything is minus the derivative of anything. So I've got, I've got to remember now what's the derivative of secant of x. And the derivative of secant of x is secant x tangent x. You can check that if you don't believe me. So that is the denominator times the derivative of the numerator. Now you've got to go minus the numerator. This requires parentheses. 1 minus secant of x times the derivative of the denominator. And again, we have to remember the derivative of something, the derivative of tangent, which is secant. I wonder if I can do this. Yeah, I can do that. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. Okay, so again, where are we? We took the denominator times the derivative of the numerator. The 1 goes away. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. And we have a minus just sitting there. Minus the numerator, 1 minus secant of x, times the derivative of the denominator, which is secant squared. And all of that is divided by the denominator squared. So that's just tangent squared. Now, the thing is that whenever you use the quotient rule, Nine times out of ten, there's some kind of simplification that you can do, especially when there are trig functions involved. So I would look to see if there's something here that could be canceled or simplified. Um, in any case, let's let's see what happens if we. I don't see anything I can factor. Well, yeah, I can. I can. I always factor if I can. I can see a factor of secant that can be pulled out from here and from here. So. This is going to give me, well, let's go ahead and multiply, all right? People are more comfortable with that anyway. So this is going to be minus tangent times this, which is secant x tangent squared. From here on, we're not doing any more calculus. This is all algebra and trig. Now I have to multiply out that secant squared times 1 minus secant and then put a minus in front. So it's going to be secant squared times 1 with a minus. secant squared of x times 1, and then secant squared times secant, which is going to be secant cubed with a minus and another minus, makes that a plus. So this is going to be secant cubed of x. So that should take care of the numerator. And that's all divided by tangent squared. And as promised, I think I can see my way through to factoring out a secant from all three of these guys. So this is going to be secant of x times what's left. Minus tangent squared 
minus secant plus secant squared. <clears throat> and all of that is divided by tangent squared. <clears throat> now there many people are going to give up because they don't know any trig identities but some people have memorized a few useful trig identities. I mean this is correct and if you leave it even in this form you wouldn't lose more than a point on any exam but you should try to do some kind of simplification if there is something. Um, it seems to me that there's a trig identity that might be useful here. Secant squared is 1 plus tangent squared so I could replace that's an identity that I have memorized so secant squared is 1 plus tangent squared so I could put 1 plus tangent squared in for here and that's going to cancel the minus tangent squared from there so that's going to give me secant of x times this guy's gone minus secant of x and the 1 is still going to be there plus 1 and then the tangent squared and the minus tangent squared canceled and so that's what I've got over tangent squared and then I'll distribute out I don't know if I want to distribute out the secant I don't see anything happening here 1 minus secant this is secant squared this is secant nah this is good enough we'll just leave it at that as I said, if you didn't do any of this simplification, you'd still be fine, and chances are you wouldn't lose any points at all, even here, because it's not obvious that there is a useful simplification at this point. I mean, clearly we did do something useful. We reduced the degree from 3 down to 2, so that's always good. But um, even so, it's not worth that many points. The important part of this problem is knowing that you have to use the quotient rule and then knowing the derivative of tangent is secant squared right there. The derivative of the top involves the derivative of secant, which is secant tangent. <clears throat> okay, one last problem and then we will quit for, the, for this lecture. And that is, what if we had to take the derivative of something like this, which we haven't had to do before? x e to the x cosecant x so we're multiplying these three things together and we're going to take the derivative of that <clears throat> well you've never seen three things being multiplied together how do you take the derivative of three things being multiplied together well you can't make up your own rule there is no rule that says for example that you take the derivative of the first thing the derivative of the second thing the derivative of the third thing and multiply all three of those together it doesn't work for two things, so you have no reason to think it's going to work for three, and it doesn't. So what can you do? Well, the only thing I can think of to do is to group a couple of these things together and think of them as one thing. So I'm going to take the first two things and think of them as one thing. x e to the x, that's just one thing. So the derivative of this product now this, this now I'm thinking about this product as a product of two things even though the first thing itself is a little complicated but it's the derivative of a product and the product rule says the answer is the first x times e to the x times the derivative of the second all right let's just write it out a long way the derivative of cosecant first times the derivative of the second plus the second cosecant x times the derivative of the first. Now what is the first? It's x e to the x. We won't worry about its derivative just yet. Alright, <clears throat> so how do I do that? Well, we just do it one piece at a time. x e to the x, I don't have to do anything with that. Just leave it x e to the x x times e to the x, but now I've got to take the derivative of the cosecant. you got to remember what the derivative of cosecant is. It's minus cosecant cotangent, the product of the cosecant of x and the cotangent of x. So that's first times the derivative of the second, plus second, which is cosecant, times the derivative of this. How do I take the derivative of that? 
Well, what kind of thing are we dealing with? It's a product, so I have to use a product rule on that. So here we go. It's got to got to have parentheses here because there's no way I'm going to be distributing this in my head while I'm using the product rule. So we use the product rule to ca to calculate this derivative. So the derivative here is the first times the derivative of the second. The derivative of e to the x you should know by now is e to the x plus the second e to the x times the derivative of the first, the derivative of x, which is easy. That's one. And that takes care of it. Now we probably should see if this simplifies at all. We have x, well, you know what? Let me do it in a sneaky way. I'm going to write this term first and multiply it out. So this is going to be, and I'll put the, the trig functions at the end. So it's going to be x e to the x cosecant x. I like writing it that way so I don't confuse what's being plugged into the cosecant. So x e to the x cosecant of x plus, and then you got cosecant of x times e to the x, so that's e to the x cosecant of x. And then there's this thing with a minus, so it's going to have a minus x e to the x cosecant x cotangent x. Now I just happened to notice that there's an e to the x cosecant x here, here, and here. So that's going to factor out and save me some space. So I take e to the x cosecant of x. And what's left is x from the first term. I pulled it all out of the second term, so that leaves a factor of 1. Check it, multiply it out. Not 0, 1. And then you pull it out from the third term, and that leaves you with x cotangent of x. x times cotangent of x. And that is it. This is your final answer. Okay. So to review, the derivative of this product is given by the product rule. And so you go first times derivative of the second plus second times derivative of the first. And then unwind each of those. The derivative of cosecant is minus cosecant cotangent. The derivative of this product is done with the product rule, and you multiply out, factor what you can, so that you have a reasonably simple expression. Okay, so um, again, the most important part of this is at the beginning here, the table that shows you the derivatives of the six basic trig functions. Spend some time in the next couple of days memorizing that. Spend some time over the weekend memorizing this table, the derivative of secant, and, and just have it in your head. Don't try to, you know, memorize the or rewrite the table just like this. You've got to have it in your head. You don't have to have it in a table form because it's got to be more active than that. You need to be able to say, you know, close your eyes and say, what's the derivative of secant? And just instantly spit it out, secant tangent. Okay. So that'll be it for now.